Hey everyone, Mayhem Prone here, coming to you from Dimension M with another review, where today, we're gonna be watching one of my most nostalgic childhood television shows, Fetch with Rough Rough Men. Now, this PBS educational- Wait, what? Where the heck am I? <laughs> Wait, what? Who the heck are you? Why did you bring me to this void? Oh, my identity isn't important, but it happens that I am bringing a message for you. What could you possibly say that's so important that it warranted you kidnapping me? Oh, you may remember from a little over a month ago, an announcement from one of your favorite YouTubers, Bob So. He announced a new series called Guest So, where his fans could come and review on his channel. The review for the first month of Guess So was Alpha and Omega. You didn't really feel like reviewing that, so you decided to pass. But that day, you promised yourself that you would review whatever he announced for month two, no matter how bad it was. Oh wait, the second month of Guess So has been announced? Why didn't you just say so? I would have come here willingly. What's the movie? No, I promise I'd never watch this movie. No, no. Uh, I guess I had to review this movie now, so we might as well get some background information. Cool Cat Saves the Kids is a 2015 movie created by Derek Savage. When I first heard of it, I thought it was just a shameless Barney ripoff. And then I read the box and it was confirmed that it was a shameless Barney ripoff. Once YouTube got a hold of this low-budget movie, it became one of the most infamous films ever on the internet. But is it really as bad as everyone says? Well, let's take a look and find out. Okay, just gotta put the DVD in. Oh, here's the title screen. Oh, no. What have I done with my life? People always say that first impressions are always the most important, and what this is telling me is that I am going to have a truly terrible time. I mean, look at this thing! Look at it! It is horrific looking! I mean, the art looks terrible and the background is just completely nonsensical. I know my intro isn't really the best thing in the world, but at least it doesn't hurt your eyes to look at. But this is just a title screen, it doesn't really mean anything about the actual movie itself, so let's get watching. So our movie starts off with a brief intro explaining how Cool Cat is someone who protects kids from bullying. Wait, 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 one second. Throughout the movie, Cool Cat is portrayed to be a kid, but here it has a picture of him wearing a costume that makes him look like he's a soldier. I know this is just an error on Derek Savage's part, but I can't really stand this, so I'm just gonna pretend that Cool Cat takes place in a dystopian future where this actually makes sense. I guess this scene might actually be okay. Wow. wow. Oh, nope, 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 nope. The first word of dialogue in the entire movie has revealed a major mistake. The vocal audio of this movie tends to suck. I mean, the music sounds perfectly fine, but the voices are blurry, distorted, and echoey. I mean, seriously, I don't do this for a living, and I have better mic quality than you. Our movie starts off with Cool Cat running to be class president. He and one of his friends named Maria are making posters for his campaign, with such witty slogans as, Cool Cat is the cat. Lord, I feel like picking on someone. And look over there. If it's not Cool Cat and Maria, they think they're so cool. Long we're a punk up. Here we're introduced to our villain of the day, Butch the Bully, who I swear graduated from Isaac from the Children of the Corn School of Villainy. After his opening monologue, Butch proceeds to start bullying Cool Cat and Maria, first through texting and calling them, and then by trying to spray paint one of Cool Cat's signs. He's swiftly defeated. Butch then hires some of his cronies to help him spray paint the entire neighborhood. Shut up, bonehead! Oh, did you just hear that? Butch just called that kid a phone head. Oh! Cool Cat quickly confronts the trio and even converts the two cronies to become good guys. This would have a huge emotional impact, except for the fact that we don't even learn these characters' names. Cool Cat's father, Daddy Derek, then invites the duo inside to eat some lunch where they meet Cool Cat's mother. Do I really have to explain why this is one of the most terrifying things that I have ever seen in my life? 
I'm just gonna try to blank this from my memory, so let's just continue with the movie. It can't get any worse than this, can it? Look at me! I'm surfing the web! Well, that's 15 seconds of my time that'll never get back. Cool Cat and Daddy Derek decide to go to Hollywood for no particular reason. One of these things is not like the others. One of these things is a freaking still image. Wait, wait, what? We're already coming back home? This scene was literally only 30 seconds long. Why the heck was it in the movie? It turns out that Cool Cat was asked to be a part of the Hollywood Christmas Parade, so he and Daddy Derek are writing a brand new song. Now I want you to listen very closely to this next scene. Strapping up a little bit too quick right there. You ready? Yes, sir! Okay, yes, rock! <laughs> Now here are the things you should have noticed. First of all, you'll see that the vocal quality went from being terrible to being crystal clear. That is the worst transition to overdubbing that I have ever heard. But most importantly, listen to that singing voice. If you listen closely to the lyrics, you can hear that it's actually Cool Cat singing. What the heck? When I first saw this clip, I thought it was Daddy Derek singing. That voice sounds nothing like Cool Cat. Are you telling me that Daddy Derek was so lazy that he couldn't find a singer who could sing in a voice like Cool Cat? That's just freaking ridiculous. And of course, in true Daddy Derek fashion, he takes this time to show off his special signed guitar. Wow, so special. So Cool Cat and Daddy Derek spent about two minutes singing, and if you don't think this is bad enough, you know what happens next? Literally a minute and a half later, Cool Cat starts another music video. Are you serious? At least the first song was setting up for the big Hollywood Christmas parade, but this second video is just 100% useless. It's a... it's... <laughs> And with that terrible music video out of the way, Daddy Derek and Cool Cat return to Hollywood to be a part of the parade, where they see many cool things like a bunch of cool cars- Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? Why do you have a giant liquor sign in your kids movie? You could have shot this video at any other angle or you could have just removed it in post-production. There is no excuse for that sign to be here. And you can't tell me that you missed the sign because that thing is freaking massive. With that corrupting imagery out of the way, Cool Cat and Daddy Derek get into the Hollywood Parade. Cool Cat, the coolest cat in town. Cool Cat is the creation of Hollywood's very own Derek Savage. Cool Cat and his adventures are featured in several children's books, including Cool Cat Loves Karate, as well as a new video project called Cool Cat Stops Bullying. That is some of the most blatant product placement I have ever seen in a movie in my life. After the parade had concluded, Cool Cat decides to go on a play date with his friend Maria at her house. It turns out that Maria's parents are actually Vivica A. Fox and Eric Estrada. They're famous actors who have been everything from King of the Hill to Tremors to the Fresh Pinch of Bel Air. Normally, this wouldn't be a problem, except for the fact that all of the movie's promotional material said that these two actors were the main characters. And guess what? This is the only scene in the movie that they appear in. Gosh, I thought Daddy Derek was desperate when he put blatant product placement in his movie, but now he's trying to use the name recognition of two actors that only appear in one scene to sell his movie. Now that is desperate. The duo decides to build sandcastles, but then Butch the Bully comes in and destroys it! Dun dun dun! He's quickly chased off by Vivica and Eric, who teach them about how to stand up against bullies. I have a story. One time, a bully was picking on me, and they said some terrible things, and none of it was true. Then, they posted it on the internet. Oh no! They put lies on the internet? That's terrible! They should be ashamed of themselves! Wait a second, he knew that his movie was terrible and that everyone on the internet was gonna make fun of it. He knew it! 
So Cool Cat and Maria decide to go back to building sandcastles when Butch comes up for a second time to bully them again, but this time they stand up for themselves and chase him away. Cool Cat then returns home and finds a magazine which allows him to enter a writing contest. And I need to write a book. So, Daddy dear, since you've written some books, could you help me get started? Buy the books, buy the books, buy the books, buy the books, buy the books. I want to enter this contest and so is your mommy. My, oh my, oh my. I can have my hair done at the beauty parlor with a hundred dollars. You notice how when Mama Cat starts speaking, the audio quality just completely changes. That's a horrible transition into overdubbing. So Cool Cat starts writing his story for the contest. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who's that? Wait a second. You're introducing a new main character into the movie almost an hour into it in an hour and 15 minute long movie? Are you kidding me? What's it made of? I don't know. I guess some type of rubber. And check this out, it even bounces off your foot. I wonder if Mikey sees that car. I hope he does. Watch out, Mikey, there's a car! Whoa, that was close. Thanks for warning me about that car. It's okay, but always look both ways before crossing the street. Guess how many times traffic safety has been taught in this movie? Guess how many more times traffic safety will be taught in this movie? So Butch starts stealing candy and other items from the neighborhood kids, but Cool Cat starts chasing him down. Eventually, Butch runs into a cop car, and the cop climbs out and arrests him, for absolutely no good reason. All the cop knows that Butch did was run into his car. He doesn't know that Butch is the candy thief, so he just arrested a kid for no real reason. I guess that contributes to my dystopian future theory. Thanks! This is a special kid's report. The candy crook has been released. There's a lack of evidence because the crook ate all the candy, so the police were forced to let him go. Okay, I call bull on that. First of all, he dropped a bunch of candy on the ground that he couldn't have possibly eaten. That's totally evidence. Second of all, he stole a book. He couldn't have eaten a book. And third of all, eyewitness testimony. There is more than enough evidence to convict this kid. Why won't this movie just end? So Cool Cat, Mikey, and Maria go out into the backyard to look for treasure, where they happen to come across a gun. Now Daddy Derek, I have one question for you. Why do you have a gun lying in your backyard? So of course, Butch the Bully goes over and collects the gun in order to use it to steal other kids' lunch money. Daddy Derek escorts the kids to school next day in order to protect them from Butch the Bully, who happens to be sewing the gun to one of his friends. And in an extremely anticlimactic conclusion, a policeman comes and arrests the duo, ending Butch's reign of terror. With Butch out of the way, Cool Cat wins both the class presidency and the Young Writers Contest. While he's celebrating his victories, Butch's friend comes and apologizes for his evil actions and promises to become good. And now that the day has been won, Cool Cat decides to give one final speech explaining how to stop bullying. Well, you see, guys? I thought long and hard about this, and with cyberbullying, you kind of can't really stop it if you don't know who it's coming from, but my best advice, just ignore them! <laughs> so, Daddy Derek, the guy who's infamous for trying to destroy YouTube channels because they gave him negative reviews, is telling me to ignore cyberbullying. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy Derek, are you kidding me? You are a freaking hypocrite. You try to shut down anyone who tries to criticize you, even when in your own movie you say to ignore cyberbullying. You tried to ruin I Hate Everything's entire career because he hated on your sucky movie. And even though you lost that battle, you still cyberbully anybody who tries to review this worthless waste of plastic. At first you seemed like a pretty nice guy, but now I'm pretty much convinced that you may be the worst human being that I've ever had the displeasure of seeing. You are an insult to the art of filmmaking and truly the scum of the earth. And that was Cool Cat Saves the Kids, but what are my overall thoughts on this movie? Well unfortunately, it's filled with dull characters portrayed by mediocre actors. 
The story is extremely weak and disjointed, and the effects look like they're from the 90s. Another major negative aspect of the movie is the fact that it is filled with advertisements for Daddy Derek's books. But surprisingly, not everything in this movie is bad, it actually has some positives. A definite highlight for the movie was the music. Each of the main characters have their own special musical theme. Each of these are well written and well performed. The only problem is by the end of the movie, they get pretty repetitive. The movie also contains several original Cool Cat songs. When it comes to these, the lyrics are terrible, but the instrumentals are actually quite good. The movie also has really good cinematography. There are very few shots where the lighting and angles aren't amazing. And you know you're doing something right when you have better cinematography than some major network shows from massive studios. And as costumes go, Cool Cat is actually pretty good. Its overall design looks more friendly, inviting, and alive than many other costumes like Barney the Dinosaur. Even though Derek Savage is actually a massive hypocrite, the movie tried to send a good message. It doesn't particularly succeed, but it doesn't really fail either. When taking into account the good and the bad, my overall opinion is that this movie is way too dull. It contains few funny moments, and the plot is slow and uninteresting. If I were a little kid, I would have gotten bored of this within 5 minutes. And I honestly can't recommend this movie to anyone, because if you wanted to show it to your kids, there's so many better alternatives you could show them, from Gravity Falls to Steven Universe to Avatar The Last Airbender. All of them not only teach better morals, but they teach much more effectively. So in conclusion, I'd have to give this movie a 2.5 out of 10. It's definitely not worth watching, but it does have some redeemable features. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Dimension M. Please consider subscribing to my channel, Endless Mayhem, to be notified of future episodes. And until next time, I'm your host, Mayhem Prone, and goodbye. Yo, yo, yo! My name is Cool Cat and I'm the coolest cat there is. I love to play and have fun and I'm always on the run. The sun is shining and I'm feeling fine. So everybody listen to the words I'm saying. Cool Cat knows the time of day so he has to say it's time for you and me to play. Yeah, and I love to play, I'm the coolest cat there is, and I'm here to stay, I'm loving life and full of joy, and that makes happiness for every girl and boy, it's right here, and then I shake it right there, for the cool cat boogie, and we all can play, this new dance really makes me happy, it's a cool cat boogie, and I love to play. And there's no right or wrong, the rules are simple as long as you move along. Little steps are cool and big steps are two. You can do the cool cat boogie and it's good for you. It doesn't matter if you're young or old because when you boogie it's all your goal. I'm feeling strong like I belong to everybody come and dance along. He couldn't have eaten a book.